Hello, Don in London. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour and it's uh, June 27th. June 27th, coming up for July. Wow. Sun shining and it's thunderstorms later and it's the second week of Wimbledon here in London, UK. So, addiction, well, what does it mean for me to substance or behaviour? My substance, alcohol, so I'm an alcoholic in recovery. And my behaviour could be equally addictive. And if I'd been a tennis fan, I'd have been down at Wimbledon with the right people in the right place doing the right thing. So that would involve being in the right place, seeing the best tennis, if that's the right place, doing the right thing, champagne and strawberries. So I don't do that anymore. In fact, I never did that, but that's just an example. Trying to be in the right place. Always trying to be something. And these days I don't have to be something, I just need to be me and find out who, who I am and what I am and know more about what is going on in my life by the day. So what helped me get to recovery? Well, family, friends, community, society, professionals all helped keep me alive when I didn't want to be because drink had got to, got to every aspect of my life and I didn't know how to get out of it. Tried willpower and willpower failed because it will. We can only sustain extremes for so long. So the extreme of drinking to beyond any way of stopping through to stopping completely are extremes of behaviour. So to run from one spectrum of what was going on to the other in a day is quite difficult. <coughs> and it, did, it was a difficult time in early days. So what helped me most was to uh, become, my, I suppose, associated with and part of the Fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, a place where I learn freedom, how to live a day at a time. And there are 12 good principles, the 12 step toolkit, where life is made possible and practical and real, so that we can understand what we can do and what we can't do on a daily basis. And number one is not drink anymore. So how did I do that? Well, it wasn't me. I just went along and listened carefully to what people in the fellowship said. And the good news about fellowship is we get freedom to be who we are and freedom to choose what we can do based on our life situation. It doesn't mean we're free to do everything. We have to take account of where we're coming from, what we have and don't have, and be real about what is good for us. And we have to start listening and learning again. And here on this particular video, and hopefully I can join them up with some others from different years, and a reading of the sixth step of the toolkit, which is how to be less fearful, less driven to put a brave face on, and less driven by ego to cover up any shame or guilt. Because in reality, there is no shame and guilt when we're living to good principles. So my thoughts for today, <coughs> and from previous years too, but these a couple of things. I went to a meeting last night of, a, of the fellowship and I, I can say categorically I don't speak for AA. I can't, never can, never will, never want to because it's full of unique authentic people who speak for themselves where they will. So for me what did it impact? Last night a meeting where I could hear what happened to many who used alcohol to suppress old nightmares. And believe you me we are damaged in some way because if we weren't damaged we would never have drunk like we did often like me to cover up the old hurt the old damage that was done over the years the things I couldn't cope with the things I couldn't see any point in trying to work through because it just hurt too much so I used alcohol to suppress all those things but we do learn in, in sober days how to deal with the wreckage of the past we do a life story and we share it with somebody we trust to find out what worked and what didn't. Just one day at a time, and in time we find we live in the moment less haunted and sometimes the ghosts are gone. But the reason why we talk about the ghosts of the past, those things which hurt us most, is to understand how not to let it happen again. How to live to different principles which work, keep us open, honest and willing, keep on changing and learning. And learning is the key so, another thing, uh, I share the daily reflections from time to time, and today it was about conforming to the AA way of life. 
and I put here conforming to the AA way with a question mark so once we understand what the AA way is that is Alcoholics Anonymous is there to enable people to get back to freedom of choice in real life in real, real life situations to face life without having to take the edge off or fix ourselves we learn to live to good principles to face reality some say this is obedience and I suggest it is freedom to live life to do good works that's do good not for doing good as sake but do good things which help us live well learn how to learn again and be more comfortable in our own skin fellowship taught me in, in recovery how to be me for a day and that's what it is how to be me for today it's not about tomorrow and it's not about the past but you know the life experience we have had tells us what is not good for us and sometimes it's very simple to say that's not good for me I need not do that and then we have to explain why sometimes and sometimes we just say I just don't feel like doing that you may feel it's good for you but it's not good for me so I'm not going to Wimbledon and I'm not tempting myself with champagne and strawberries and I feel happier knowing I've got something better to do today which is good for me and if I want to know what's going on at the tennis I'll watch it on TV and that will help me I can still enjoy it I just don't have to indulge in the extras which used to go with it and in the past from previous years our anarchic democracy that's AA where every voice counts every voice is equal and every voice has a chance to speak at group consciences as they're called group meetings to decide how meetings are run hammered out on the anvils of experience and I like that phrase anvils of experience hammering out what works on a daily basis is the very backbone of what makes life work we don't shirk what we need to look at anymore learning to live to the good with courage, faith and esteem from powerlessness and unmanageability slowly being restored to sanity included in the world as it is clearing the wreckage of the past sharing our truth we start to feel and think differently as reality impacts and we are real today may not seem it, may not feel it can feel very uncomfortable to be talking reality and facing the feelings we have inside it doesn't mean we're shrinking violets indeed dealing with our feelings as they are happening knowing how we feel learning what is a feeling can be quite uh, startling in the first instance and then we get used to it used to being real and again conforming to the AA way letting go extremes of fear brave facing and ego developing balance with courage faith and confidence so step six which is all about defects of character and def defects of character for me are the extremes of behavior so if I'm living in extreme fear living with an, a brave face which is covering up extreme feelings trying to deal with situations which feel impossible and my ego is saying don't show any weakness then I'm doing myself a disservice and a disservice to the people around me because all the people around me can help me even if I'm the leader or just a follower depending on what's going on so if I say it feels a li little bit wrong what can we do I'm including people rather than excluding them and equally courage faith and confidence which has no foundation to be extreme full of courage and bravery and fortitude when we don't know what we're doing is foolhardy it's like people being told to get out of a trench in World War One, go fight the enemy shoot them knowing full well that the outcome is probably going to be getting killed and we can't dodge bullets in life some bullets anyway but other bullets we don't need to see fired at us if we are living reality because we don't stay where it's harmful that means we're not cowards by the way it just means weighing up a situation knowing enough fear sometimes a little bit of a brave face will see us through but also having courage and confidence and faith that we're on the right path but when we're dealing with an extreme situation extreme feelings exist for a reason fight or flight and then can we decide what to do it's not 
hang on, let's have a group discussion about this. Sometimes we do need to respond and react very quickly to danger of whatever kind it might be. So we learn reality and what we, we can do about it. Yep, steps and traditions. Principles to unravel are anger, resentment and belligerence. All that stuff, the wreckage of the past. The AA way to be unique and authentic individuals with personal choices. Unity in service and recovery. In fellowship, that's how we help, by being of service to others. In unity and recovery. Just the way we are. And always just for today. Because that's what it is. Day, we're in day size, living in the day, learning what's going on. And being open to change. So it doesn't have to, if it, this phase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's very, very appropriate if something's working really, really well. And it's required and real. But we don't hold on to old ideas which don't fit the new reality. We need the new ideas and to live reality as it is today. Anyway, that's me all about June 27th, second week of Wimbledon, the sun is shining brightly this morning, thunderstorms later on. It, life can be thundery, even without the weather, but today, just now, it's all right. And I feel okay in the moment of now. More later. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance was alcohol. My behaviour could be equally addictive. Work, relationships, people, places, things. Always trying to fix myself and never very happy because I couldn't find out what, what the gap was inside me which caused the fear in the first place. Of course the gap inside is to be filled with good experiences if they're possible and also to learn from the difficult experiences of life. I need not fear that gap anymore. So I share here the daily reflections from AA, the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't speak for AA, never can, never will. It's for the unique, authentic people who speak for themselves. And it's from those people I get my experience, strength and hope and learn wisdom from others, how to live life and be myself. So I may make my own choices. But for today, it talks about conforming to the AA way. We obey AA steps and traditions because we really want them for ourselves. It is no longer a question of good or evil. We can conform because we genuinely want to conform. Such is our process of growth in unity and function. Such is the evidence of God's grace and love among us. And for me, the 12 steps are about open, honest and willing to face life on life's terms. And the traditions are all about unity, service and recovery. And that helps us find our spiritual life, which is to be able to cope with what's going on now. It goes on to say, It is fun to watch myself grow in AA. I fought conformity to AA principles from the moment I entered, but I learned from the pain of my belligerence that in choosing to live the AA way of life, I opened myself to God's grace and love. And for me, that means God is truth, the absolute truth, not my belief or opinion. God is love, and God works through people, so I learn from others. Then I began to know the full meaning of being a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. And for me, that means I'm just one of many, no bigger, no smaller. And as I always say, it's the m many voices of recovery that are so important to making life possible and learning how to live well even when it's difficult. And the serenity prayer to God or good conscience, which I always share, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is, for me, just for today. John in London, hello, and it's uh, June 27th, 2009, Saturday morning, around about half past nine or thereabouts, and uh, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addiction, alcohol, could have been anything else, never got round to it, feared it probably, and my behaviour, cross-addicted sometimes into workaholic, relationshipaholic, you name it, sportsaholic, in terms of challenging myself 
but not other people. I didn't have that competitive edge when it came to being top dog. But um, I, did get, I did get to fairly high places now and again in my life and realised when I got there it was probably the wrong place to be for me. Didn't enjoy it, didn't actually enjoy the money it provided either. <clears throat> and uh, I guess I was looking for a spiritual connection to living and the gift in recovery is for me to find out what that spiritual connection is for me. So it is seeing the truth of now, the power of now, not living in the past and not worrying about the future. What helps me most? Uh, family who care for me, community, society and a big fellowship which I will be grateful for and have gratitude for every day. A place to go, this fellowship, Alcoholics Anonymous, where people know my malady, which is if I take a drink, it won't, it won't cure anything, and a thousand will never do. So I just don't drink a day at a time. And that time scale fits with my spiritual connection to find the truth in the moment, this imperfectly perfect present moment. And uh, none of us are perfect, except we are imperfectly perfect, and we can keep on learning every single day that we keep on going at life. <coughs> and uh, the Fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, I don't speak for it, never will, and I can't speak for unique, authentic people either, because that's what the Fellowship has, unique, authentic people making their way soberly a day at a time. So how do we do it? Well, the preamble which is shared at the beginning of every meeting, which applies to anybody who's new or anybody who's been around for decades, and it goes like this, the preamble, AA. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from al alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And, you know, my, my recovery is dependent on professional help for type 1 diabetes, which I've got in recovery, thankfully because I'm still alive. Uh, clinical depression, which is managed professionally to make sure that I have the right chemical balance in my head, doesn't make me happy. Uh, only life can do that. And uh, so does life make me sad as well. But the fellowship, <coughs> non-professional, ordinary people like me, but unique and authentic with their own take on life. And so we share our wisdom each and every time we meet up. And, you know, it's good to do that. And I was listening to somebody last night who has probably 40 some odd years recovery. And they said, you know, if you worry about the future or if you're planning for the future, it hasn't happened yet. So maybe plan more simply in the day, of the, the, blah, the day in which we are. We do have to keep a weather eye for the future and what we can do, but it's living in the moment which really counts, where we can actually experience our feelings and our thinking. And something I've often said, and I, I do believe it, actually we feel life first, we feel the feelings of life, and then we think whether they're a good idea or not. And it's when we get that knot inside our stomach where we're not quite sure what is going on, like over the last couple of days with the tragic death of Michael Jackson, you know, the the absolute, I cannot believe it's happening. And that's part of denial and a process of grieving, as I've mentioned in the previous two videos. So we have big things happen in our lives, and <clears throat> although we were not able to know Michael Jackson as a, as a friend, we were very aware of his presence on the planet through his music and all the hard things which, and difficult things which he experienced in his life. And obviously with the knowledge now that he was addicted to various forms of medication. And who knows how that was managed, but uh, all I know is it's a combination of professional help which helps us if we are able to understand what is being said to us, and not necessarily very well under the influence of anything. And for me a fellowship of ordinary people, innocent in their new outlook, and trying how to see how life can turn out. So with that wisdom in my head, I, I need professional help to make sure I'm on track with uh, the other maladies besides my recovery. So recovery is one day long for me, and at the moment, in the last week or two, I've been experiencing very good blood sugars compared to how it was 
but now I have to watch out for the weight because that is the other factor and exercise and diet so it never ends but the gift is if we keep it in the day we have a much better idea of what we can and cannot do and <clears throat> I use the literature of AA here I'm leaning down to get something which I pulled off the internet I don't, I don't claim to have any unique authentic view of recovery but you know things help me and at the moment it's June still which is all about step six in the 12 step action program for individuals who wish to use it and utilize the tools of the program nothing is set in stone we have suggestions these steps are suggestions and step six is, step six is looking at our defects of character which normally means we're at the extreme of some behavior or other we could be at the extreme of behavior which is bad for us and other people which includes drinking or at the other end trying to be perfect and very uh, prideful and I like to be in the middle somewhere and step six is really about the uh, the seven deadly sins and also the virtues in step seven which goes into July's uh, message on my YouTube but the the thing about sins and virtues I have a list here of them and they cure something so humility cures pride kindness cures envy abstinence cures gluttony chastity cures lust patient patience cures wrath liberality cures greed diligence cures sloth and those are big things and um, it fits with the 12-step program <coughs> providing we actually remind ourselves that it's just progress and not perfection so in as Bill sees it it's dropped open at page 136 for me today it says giving up defects which is all about step 6 in June looking at those defects we are unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps in some cases we shall say this I can I cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves this I will never give up the moment the moment we say no never our minds close against the grace of God or good conscience such rebellion may be fatal instead we should abandon abandon limited objectives and begin to move towards God's will for us or good conscience or whatever your higher power is and those are good those are good messages and they help me and other people so if we're looking at our sins it's at the extremes so we can be extremely pious sanctimonious if we're not careful and I run into that trap if I try and preach to people which is why I just share how my life is going and you know I'm just an honest person well trying to be honest person I don't know if I always succeed sometimes I can be very vague but daily reflections today for June 27 conforming to the AA way now here, here's one we obey AA steps and, and traditions because we really want them for ourselves it is no longer a question of good or evil we conform because we genuinely want to conform such is the, our process of growth and unity and function such is the evidence of God's grace and loving love amongst us and uh, for me again God good conscience on any given day I can believe or maybe disbelieve depends on the shocks we have he goes on to say it is fun to watch myself grow in AA I fought conformity to AA principles for the, for the moment from the moment I entered but I learned from the pain of my belligerence that in choosing to live the AA way of life I opened myself up to God's grace and love all good conscience then I began to know the full meaning of being a member of Alcoholics Anonymous and always we retain our right to have our outlook and that's so important so on any given day I don't know what, what, what or where I am but I, I'm good with the principles of service recovery and unity and I'm good with the principles of the 12 steps which is about being open honest and willing so in the end the see serenity prayer which saves my bacon more often than not God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference just for today John in London good morning and it's June 27th 2008 Friday morning and the time is half past ten I'm a bit late doing this video I've had a lot on my mind and uh, I suppose um, maybe I'm reflecting on the needing enough balance in my life and how to get balance and who is in my life 
and how life is going. So all sorts of big things. And I, what I find is I need to reflect and meditate a little bit each day, uh, not only on what's going on for me, but what's going on in the world and for others who I care dearly about. And what helps me is going to fellowship meetings, that's the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. So I may get my choices back a day at a time. And sometimes that can be very difficult when our head says one thing and our heart says another. Anyway, what is Alcoholics, Alcoholics Anonymous all about? It is this. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. <coughs> and that's uh, emotional, physical and spiritual sobriety, I guess. Physical sobriety is quite easy, you just don't drink uh, and do exercise and try and do the right thing. Emotional sobriety, I think we, we aim for balance and hopefully we get it on a daily basis but sometimes we get pulled one way and another. And I guess for me at the moment I'm feeling like I'm being pulled in different directions. Uh, what my head says uh, about me and my situation and what my feelings are about me and my situation. And I've been taking account of at least one other person very dear to me as time goes by. And <coughs> for me, I feel a bit worn out. And also that uh, other judgments are coming to bear on me in a very unhelpful way. It's not about me and my nearest and dearest. It's probably about people outside who don't know me that well and look at me in a particular world way of the world looking at most people, which is in the materialistic sense and uh, how they show up, how they put a brave face on and act in public or around others. And to, for me, that's quite difficult to do these days. I don't like putting on a brave face. And uh, brave facing means ego and often fear, fear of what people may think of me. And quite honestly, I very rarely have this concern in my mind, but when it impacts on another person and uh, how they may see the world as well, and maybe me, then it really does start to undermine just a little bit what maybe is going on. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, not the easiest morning for me, just at the moment, and um, not the easiest moment in maybe a relationship of great importance for me. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes we can rush in and not allow enough time to really start living in the day as we do. So we have uh, maybe ideas of how things may be, or should be, or ought to be, rather than as they are in reality. And we are impacted by all different sorts of people, events, places, things, and mostly we are powerless over them, uh, but it will impact all the same. And no matter how much we, ha we care for another person, it can make it difficult to be with them as they are impacted by the same judgment, maybe, or errors of judgment, as others may see it. So, I'm not feeling sorry for myself particularly, but I do feel spaced out, and like I haven't had enough space to really reflect and understand where I am. And uh, reacting is no good. If we keep on reacting, we're putting out fires, or you know, we're letting things keep smouldering along, and then have to go back and stamp on them again. And it's really important that we can find a clean way of living, that is emotional sobriety and spiritual sobriety and spiritual for me is living in the moment of now really living in it and not just recording the events we've been to or done and there is a danger of that of uh, trying to make things look right when in fact they're not right so all sorts of questions in my mind at the moment and sometimes the best way is a bit of space but at the same time still go to meetings of uh, my fellowship where I hear some wisdom on a daily basis and the wisdom is about knowing what I can do and what I cannot do and the wisdom is gained knowing the difference, that's the serenity power. So readings for today from the daily reflections this one, uh, written by AA people, for AA people it says conforming to the AA way 
we obey AA steps and traditions because we really want them for ourselves. It is no longer a question of good or evil. We conform because we are genuinely we generally want to conform. Such is our process of growth in unity and function. Such is the evidence of God's or good conscience, grace, and love among us. And that's true because the uh, twelve steps of AA actually help us endeavour to make life work one day at a time and the traditions keep the fellowship safe and focused on one thing, uh, a desire to help people stop drinking at one day at a time. And it goes on to say, it is fun to watch myself grow in AA. I fall conformity to AA principles from the moment I entered, but I learned from the pain of belligerence that, in choosing to live the AA way of life, I open myself up to God or good conscience, grace and love. Then I began to know the full meaning of being a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. And it is the pursuit of open, honest, willing ways of living. And uh, open, willing ways of living mean that we have to face the truth as we see it and then inform it with more truth so we can either, either modify or accept what is really happening for us. And going on to As Bill Sees It, page 182, says the reality of spiritual experiences. Perhaps you raise the question of hallucination versus the divine imagery of a genuine spiritual experience. I doubt if anyone has authoritatively defined what an halluc hallucination really is. However, it is certain that all recipients of spiritual experiences declare for their reality. The best evidence of that reality is the subsequent fruits for those the subsequent fruits. Those who receive these gifts of grace are very much changed people, almost invariably for the better. This can scarcely be said of those who hallucinate. So it's about reality, the spiritual experience, and I'm so, so sure this is right. Some might think me presumptuous when I say that my own experience is real. Nevertheless, I can surely, surely report that in my own life and in the lives of countless others, the fruit of that, that experience has been real and the benefactions beyond reckoning. And you know, the absolute truth of being sober a day at a time is we do get to know what open, honest, and willing is, what the truth is in the living in the moment. Because if we're not living in the truth, we soon find out, and life gets very unmanageable. The uh, final reading book, if you like, is this one, the 24 hours a day, and I often don't get time to include this. I don't know why I've got time today, but anyway, here we go. If you can take your troubles as they come, if you can maintain your calm and composure amid pressing duties and unending engagements, if you can rise above the distressing and disturbing circumstances in which you are set down, you have discovered a priceless secret discovered a priceless secret of daily living. Even if you are forced to go through life weighed down by some un in unescapable misfortune or handicap, and live, get, live each day as it comes with poise and peace of mind, you have succeeded where most people have failed. You have wrought a greater achievement than a person who rules a nation. Have I achieved poise, poise and peace of mind? And most of the time I do. Uh, <coughs> not always in the affairs of the heart, though, because, you know, these things involve more than one person. So, what is poise and peace of mind? What does it mean to me? Well, you know, the, the truth will always set us free. There's no doubt about that. And when we are honest with ourselves and other people about just we are, where we are and why we feel that way, then we have a greater opportunity of making the day work. If, however, we try and cover up or smooth over the cracks or ameliorate in some way what is going on for us, we lose truth for ourselves and then in that we become dishonest inside and often in how we express ourselves outwardly. And the gift of re recovery is a maintaining of daily balance in this respect. Nobody is perfect by any means and I'm not perfect by a long way. But, you know, I'd rather be judged on my truth, openness and honesty rather than some, mat some materialistic and, uh, I suppose, brave face I might put on just to be amiable to other people. Sometimes I'm not. And uh, today is one of my, my more difficult days of just trying to find the truth on a daily basis. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. 
my addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time and that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment, find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life, everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, that fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about. 12 Steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the 12 Traditions in Fellowship, Unity, Service and Recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble which is on this little card which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do to include people around being sober one day at a time and living a spiritual life knowing what our feelings are and not drinking. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June for me is all about step six. So I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to the, in the biblical sense, the seven deadly, seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet you'll find many a version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly. Right, so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God. It has been called the sin from which all others arise. Pride is also known as vanity. So pride is the first deadly sin or defect. Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. 
and the country virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the the poem an epic poem written by Prudentius circa 410 AD an epic poem written practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth so very black and white you're either one or the other but in real life what are we we're all of those things at different times in our lives and although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned we all have some sort of traits around those issues and the 12 steps of the fellowship try to address this in in the way I understand it in step 6 and step 7 so step 6 is all about my defects of character and step 7 is all about my shortcomings so my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues short on virtue but in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society but around that is a personal code so these 12 steps principles these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living and how we do that is entirely up to us no one's going to stop us doing it another way and if they were trying to stop us our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way we get stubborn and defiant often or I did so step six in the fellowship program reads as this with a bit of commentary from me and don't forget this is just a personal understanding it's your understanding in the end which counts and where do you get your personal understanding from life and also listening to the many voices in society and probably in the fellowship of AA if you stick around long enough so we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character this is the step that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls so de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six yes he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults without any reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator and again don't get hung up on creator it's the God of your understanding or a power greater than you which counts in this the common good often is used or utilized of course the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member to him this proposition will be no theory at all it will be just about the largest fact in his life he will usually offer his proof in a statement like this sure I was beaten absolutely licked my own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol change of scene the best efforts of family friends doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism I simply couldn't stop drinking and no human being could seem to do the job for me but when I became willing to clean house that's step four and then asked a higher power God as I understand him to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished it was lifted right out of me well it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time but when I got to fellowship I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self will will run riot and willpower will fail and it was right so I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people 
and then I started to learn. In AA meetings all over the world, statements just like this are heard daily. It is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way, all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives, and God has pre proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis, and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking, then my defects of character seem to diminish. Personality traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their, best, their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility. Kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence. So, working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here, their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their Creator's desires to give them new life. For nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed, that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose. And that's to do with our thinking and and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions, but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character, and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control, as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be in that addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect. Because if we try to be perfect from day one, we would fail. We, we would be back on pride and self-will. 
The key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn. How many of us have this degree of readiness? In an absolute sense, practically nobody has it. The best we can do, with all honesty that, can, that we can summon, is to try to have it. Even then, the best of us will discover, to our dismay, that there is always a sticking point, a point at which we say, no, I can't give this up yet. And we should often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry, this I will never give up. Such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves. No matter how far we have progressed, desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God, or, as some say, nature and providence, as we've got to where we are in our nature, and providence, that is, as the world is today. Some who feel they have done the well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps. No one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy, or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves, yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway, but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life however it turns out to be. What we must recognise now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow, or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say? so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds. And even while staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything. I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path, and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness and uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say, desist of pen and tongue, because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. Even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it, because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy, to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction, 
else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not rather than working for it or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it and how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on only we call it only we call that retiring consider too our talents for procrastination which is really sloth in five syllables nearly anyone can make a good list of, the, of such defects as these and few of us would, be se would seriously think of giving them up at least until they cause us excessive misery and without a doubt if we go hell for leather in one direction thinking we're right and we wonder why nobody's following us we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up but if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right or that my way or the highway is the right way then we are alone again and isolated and we may not drink but we're certainly not as sober as we could be some people of course may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according of course to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission, we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals but you know strict adherence on a daily basis life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways so defects as well as virtues will be around there are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress seen in this light step six is still difficult but not at all impossible the only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying and that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry the answer may be no so we keep on trying looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say this I cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up Let's dispose of what happen, appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalizing alcoholic 
could, con could certainly be given a long term meaning. He could say, how very easy, sure I'll head towards perfection but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Or complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked or we provoke others. The moment we say no never our minds close against the grace of God or common sense. After all, what else would God's words be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because you know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often. That life isn't giving us what we think we deserve. So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence and I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past I was criticized deeply by someone when they I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect it's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out my defect would be not to say it if you get my drift so these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven. So how does it work for me on a daily basis? Well, in the morning I say, how am I feeling, why, and what can I do? And if I feel okay, given my current situation, my feelings fit my, my experience right now, then life is understandable and comprehensible. I can, I can get on with it. But if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way, in a particular direction of those defects or sins, or my virtues are without foundation, courage, faith and confidence, over elated, I need to ask myself, why am I feeling this way? and that's not to actually analyze to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now, why? because I'm giving it, I haven't given it a second thought what can I do? consider my options today or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence 
and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent and the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step six June step seven July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear very facing an ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today